Hey guys, this is Billy Davidson with Davidson Pressure Wash and Painting out of Hammond, Louisiana. I wanted to talk to y'all about how to pressure wash one of these um, metal siding buildings. It is very imperative that you don't put pressure on it because of the oxidation. It has oxidation all over it and we are not trying to disturb the oxidation today. That is a whole entirely due process. So what we're trying to do is remove any biological materials on the siding whether it be a mold and mildew or pollen, a little algae, that sort of thing. Um, doesn't look that bad, but we're going to go ahead and use the X-Jet on it today. Um, basically, um, <clears throat> we have Chris and, dang, I can't forget his name, Sam. <laughs> Sam. Sorry about that. Um, we got Chris and Sam today. Um, they're going to be showing y'all how to X-Jet. Now, in this... Um, bucket of um, sodium hypochlorite we got that is a seven gallon bucket so we got two gallons of sh and about four gallons of water and a little bit of uh, surfactant and so they're going to go ahead and start applying from the bottom up and basically what you want to do now you could downstream this or if you have a 12 volt that would be perfect too you want to apply enough solution on there to um, to keep from having to put any pressure on it. And a good way that you can tell is if once you apply your solution to it, wait about 10 minutes, be patient. If it's still wet, it's still working. That's what I tell the guys here. Um, if, the, if the siding is still wet, you shouldn't have to reapply until it dries or it looks nearly dry. You kind of got to use your own judgment there. But it should clear up any biological growth on it. If it doesn't, you can reapply or either bump up your mix slightly, readjust your mix for it, and see if that clears it up. The last thing you want to do is get on this stuff with a pressure tip or a straight tip or something. Man, anything more than what you would feel uncomfortable putting your hand in front of, you shouldn't have to use any more than that, to be honest with you. I mean, maybe slightly more, but around that amount of pressure and generally speaking that is about 500 psi at 24 inches so you know we talk a lot of psi we talk a lot about high flow if you're new in the business um i'll give you a little background of psi the machines we use using today we have two 3500 psi machines that is at the pump 3500 psi that is basically uh 3,500 pounds of pressure per square inch at the pump. So, you know, if you break that down, if you got a 100 foot hose on it, and let's say you got a pressure tip in it, whether it be the green one, the white one, or the yellow one, um, you probably run about 3,200 psi, give or take 150 psi. Usually it's about 150 psi drop per 50 feet, but that all depends on a lot of stuff. So. So let's just call it 3,000 PSI at 100 feet with a pressure tip in it. Um, that's 3,000 pounds per square inch. That would literally rip your hand apart quite easily. And you definitely don't want to use that much pressure on anything. Now, once you get out about 24 inches from that pressure tip, you're going to probably drop a good 1,500 PSI. So you know, it widens out the angle, the apex of that angle widens out. So you probably got about 1,500 PSI at 24 inches. That can still stripe up a building like this. It can still, in some cases, uh, remove some paint. Um, it definitely, definitely can disturb vinyl side. So that's still too much pressure. So, you know, if you backed it up 48 inches and you had 500 PSI, it's so fanned out, it doesn't do much cleaning. So that's why we talk about PSI is not important. It's the flow that is more important. So the tips that we use in today have less than 500 PSI at 24 inches, but even at eight feet, they still gonna put out the eight to 10 gallons of flow. So that's cleaning units at a, um, at a distance, whereas the PSI, you don't have cleaning units at a distance. And I could go on and on about it. It gets kind of a little bit complicated and it's kind of hard to explain about cleaning units. 
But um, if y'all have any questions about it or want to find out more information, you can always call me or text me or leave a comment below. I try to get to it. But getting back to this building, once they have X jet it, we will switch to the J rod, which we have now. And we're basically just going to rinse it off. And, um, and like I said, if you still see biological growth on it after you have applied your chemical solution, you need to reapply. Or um, at the same time, you might have to bump up your solution a little bit. So we had 12.5% in the bucket. You know, I, I don't do all that 0.5 when I'm doing my math. Actually, I count it as 10% because it's been sitting out in the sun for a while. I just counted as 10. I mixed two gallons of uh, the SH with three gallons of water. Then the X jet again splits it in half. I figured that would be about strong enough to remove everything, and it did. Looks like it's taken care of it. So if you got to reapply it twice, go ahead. That is so much easier and quicker than having to get up there and pressure tip all that stuff. And it's a lot safer because, like I said, if you pressure tip all this, you're probably going to make someone really, really mad and you won't get paid. Um, I've seen it happen before. Um, yeah, like they would be looking to sue you and everything else because you could mess this building up um, to a point to where it would look like uh, a child got up there with a crayon and scribbled it all into that side. And so just remember, uh, we're not trying to disturb that oxidation. That is a whole other process. And oftentimes, even after you remove the oxidation, it still looks horrible. You almost got to be prepared to paint the building at times. So. Be cautious of that. Like I said, apply your solutions one, two, three times. Look, I don't care if you had to do it four times. It's much safer than having to pressure tip all of this metal side. So, anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, like always, um, if y'all want to um, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell, yeah, I think they tell me that I'll um, let your phone know exactly when we upload. We try to put out three or four videos every couple of weeks. It's, um, sometimes it's hard. I got a, I got this new guy here today. Um, so I'm training him and trying to get the job done. So that's you know, a process. And then you get home, you got to try to upload it. And you're taking phone calls. So just uh, subscribe to it, you know. Comment below, let me know I'm getting to y'all. If there's anything else that y'all want to see in a video, let me know. Because, um, you know, there's something something y'all want to see that I haven't done so far. I think I got going on a couple hundred videos out there now. But we see all kind of crazy stuff out here in the field. And sometimes I, I got time to grab the camera and roll on it. But sometimes I can't. Um, Another thing, real quick, um, uh, here shortly, we're going to be getting on that roof to um, pull out some debris out the gutters in a minute by hand. When y'all doing that, now this is dang near three stories up. When you approach that edge up there, um, go low. What I say, if you are within two body lengths of the edge, you need to be pretty much on your knees at that point. And as you get closer, you want to do scooting. And even if there's a second person, um, you know, up there with you, ready to help you out if you sort of lost your balance. Just a flat roof, so there's no risk of falling, you know, if you know what you're doing. But I would never walk up to that edge and, um, you know, just stand right on the edge of it. I, I approach that edge very cautiously and kind of scoot towards it and... You know, if you got to grab a plant or something growing out of some, I think there's a little tree on the other side kind of growing out of it. So be careful of that. Uh, we may put a safety harness on. I don't, I'm not sure yet. But anyway, uh, y'all be safe out there. And remember, it is um, we're in the middle of May. So y'all make sure y'all put that sunscreen on. I know that's easy to forget. The reason why I mentioned uh, a week or so ago, I was on a metal roof. And I mean, I wasn't literally up there 30 minutes, man, it, and it almost burnt me. That night, I was just, man, I was praying. I was like, oh, man, I hope it doesn't get bad. But fortunately, it um, it was right on the edge of being burnt, and I was just minimally exposed to it. So don't forget that sunscreen, man. Just uh, put a couple bottles on each truck, and it goes quick if you got two or three guys working. 
but it can save somebody a, a lot of horrible pain and misery. And then, um, then you down a man for three or four days. So y'all keep that in mind as well. And as usual, y'all need to reach out to me, 985-345-0778, and I'll talk to y'all soon.